Good morning everyone and welcome to this service of worship and praise on behalf of Margate Baptist Church. Our service this morning will include communion so if you would like to take part in that you will need to have some bread and some wine or juice ready a little bit later on. Now today is the first Sunday in Lent, the season of preparation and reflection before Easter. Traditionally Lent lasts for 40 days reminding us of the 40 days which Jesus spent in the desert preparing to begin his earthly ministry. Some Christians use the season of Lent as a time of prayer and fasting to bring themselves closer to God. Others like to give up some luxury, such as eating chocolate, during Lent to remind themselves that there are more important things in life than luxuries and pleasure and indulgence. Whatever our personal choices, Lent gives us all an opportunity to reflect on our spiritual journey and on the values that we live by. This year, perhaps more than ever, we would all do well to prayerfully consider the things that truly matter to us the most and how we can best serve God in our daily lives, even at this time of loss and uncertainty. We're going to begin our service with a very old prayer. It's a prayer of St Augustine of Hippo. St Augustine was a church leader from North Africa in the 5th century and this prayer of his has been translated into English. We're going to use it as we come to God in worship now. Let us pray. Breathe in me, O Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Act in me, O Holy Spirit, that my work too may be holy. Draw my heart, O Holy Spirit, that I may love only what is holy. Strengthen me, O Holy Spirit, that I may defend all that is holy. Guard me, O Holy Spirit, that I myself may always be holy. In the name of Christ. Amen. Well, our first song this morning is Awake My Soul, which will be a new song for many of us, but it has some wonderful words and it's a very simple tune, so it should be quite easy to pick up. And it's used this morning by permission of Resound Music. After the song, Keith Grossmith is going to bring us today's scripture reading. But first, let's share together in our song Awake My Soul. Oh, 
With all our soul, we worship. With all our might, we worship. With all our strength, we worship. Good morning. Today's reading comes from Psalm 33, lines 1 to 11, Hymn to Providence. Shout for joy to Yahweh, all virtuous men. Praise comes well from upright hearts. Give thanks to Yahweh on the lyre. Play to him on the ten-string harp. Sing a new song in his honour. Play with all your skill as you acclaim him. The word of Yahweh is integrity itself. All he does is done faithfully. He loves virtue and justice. Yahweh's love fills the earth. By the word of Yahweh, the heavens were made. Their whole array by the breath of his mouth. He collects the ocean waters as though in a wineskin. He stores the deeps in cellars. Let the whole world fear Yahweh. Let all who live on earth revere him. He spoke and it was created. He commanded and there it stood. Yahweh thwarts the plans of nations, frustrates the intentions of peoples. But Yahweh's plans hold good forever. The intentions of his heart from age to age. Amen. In our Sunday morning services recently, we've been rediscovering God by looking at what God is really like. We've talked about the fact that God is all-knowing, ever-present and all-powerful. We've seen that God is an unchanging God, a gracious God and a sovereign God. And today we're going to remind ourselves that our God is a faithful God. If you're ever going to really trust someone, you need three things. First, you need to know that they will be honest and will tell you the truth. Second, you need to know that they are fair-minded and will do what is right. And third, you need to know that they are dependable. Well, Psalm 33 says all three of those things are true of God. As the New International Version puts it, the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. God is right and true and faithful. He always does what's right. He always tells the truth and he is utterly dependable. And each of these things is summed up in the word faithful. Our God is a faithful God. The Old Testament covers over 2,000 years of the history of Israel. And in all those centuries, God made many promises to his people, and not once did he ever break any of those promises. Time and time again, even when Israel broke its promises to God, he was always faithful to his word. Now someone has counted, and apparently there are over 7,000 promises in the Bible, promises that you and I can claim and live by. This morning we only have time to look at one or two of those and to see how we can depend on the faithfulness of God in our lives day by day. So first I want to say that because God is faithful we can depend on him to forgive our sins. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 says this, if we confess our sins he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We know that God will forgive our sins if we ask him from a repentant heart. How do we know that? Not because of who we are, but because of who he is. Now I'm so glad about that, aren't you? Because if my forgiveness was dependent on me, on what I'm like, then I'd be in real trouble. But I can only say hallelujah. God's forgiveness is based not on me, but on who he is and on what he is like, faithful, just and true. 
It's because of God's utter dependability and faithfulness that we can know that he has forgiven us and he will forgive us according to his promise. Now, as human beings, we have a tendency to try to bargain our way out of trouble. We get caught doing wrong and we say, Lord, if you forgive me just this once, I'll go to church every Sunday. I'll say my prayers every day. I'll be good forever and ever. I promise. We can't help it. It's in our nature to bargain. But it's in God's nature to forgive. We don't need to bargain with him because he's already promised to forgive us if we ask him by facing up to our failures. And because he is faithful, that's a promise that we can trust. Secondly, because God is faithful, we can depend on him to guide us. Don't you love that verse in Proverbs 3 which says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. We all have times in our lives when we face difficult decisions and hard choices, and we're often left asking, what should I do? It's tempting to pray for a big finger to come down from heaven and to point the right way that we should go. But in my experience, God very rarely does that. But what he does do is to guide us in gentler, subtler ways. Ways that require a bit of faith and trust on our side. For example, God very often guides us through his word in the Bible. The Bible can help us to make good decisions, good choices, if we approach it rightly. Not by opening it at random and hoping for a relevant verse, that's a recipe for disaster. But by reading the Bible with care and with attention, with prayer and with discernment. And God guides us in other ways too, through godly advice and wise counsel, for example. Because he is a faithful God, we can trust him to guide our paths if we are willing to be guided. And then thirdly, because God is faithful, we can depend on him to make things right in the end. I've decided that newspapers are bad for your health. Most days I read a daily newspaper, but I'm increasingly finding that it's bad for my blood pressure. Do you find that? It seems that almost every day I read about criminals getting away with outrageous behaviour or innocent people being made to suffer through no faith fault of their own or wealthy politicians lining their own pockets or telling blatant lies. And I end up just throwing my newspaper down on the floor and saying it's not fair, it's not right. As I say, it's bad for the blood pressure. But the truth is that there is much in this life that's not fair and that's unjust. We're living in an imperfect world which is spoiled by selfishness and greed and sin. And every day the guilty get away with their crimes and the innocent get hurt. Life is not fair. But one day God is going to put everything right. Romans 12, 19 says this, Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. What that verse is saying is that we can all get angry about the injustices of this world, and rightly so. But taking revenge is no way to put things right. That will only lead to more hurt and more anger and more pain. In the end, only God can put things right. Do you think he doesn't know about the injustices and the greed and the lies? Do you think he doesn't care about the suffering of the innocent and the wrongdoings of the guilty? He knows and he cares. And one day he will right all the wrongs and replace all the unfairness with real justice. 
The greatest example of this was Jesus. He was insulted and lied about and beaten and mocked. And in the end he was put to death. But he trusted his heavenly father to put things right. And as Philippians 2 tells us, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name above all names. The Bible makes it clear that there will be a day of reckoning, a day of judgment, if you like, and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And on that day, our faithful and just God will make everything right. In the meantime, our job is to work for what is right within the confines of our lives and to keep on trusting, to keep on serving and to keep on loving so that everyone may have the chance to know our amazing, faithful God. In a few moments, we're going to share communion. But before we do that, we're going to sing a hymn that I know many of you will know and love. It's shared with us by the Evangelical Movement of Wales from their annual conference in Aberystwyth. And I invite you to join in at home as we prepare for communion by singing Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Now shall we pray together. Lord, as we come now to your table to share communion with you and with one another, we ask you to be with us in our homes and in our hearts. We cannot meet in person right now, and that's hard because we love to gather around your table to share this meal with one another. But thank you that we can still meet online and that we can still remember your sacrifice for us, that we can still celebrate your love as we eat bread and drink wine together. So bless these moments that we share. Thank you for dying for us on the cross. Thank you for allowing us to be forgiven by your astonishing grace. Thank you for your unfailing love. By your Holy Spirit, unite and bless us now, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to share the communion meal together, we remember the words and actions of Jesus. On the night when he was betrayed, as he shared the Passover with his disciples, he took bread and gave thanks and blessed it. And then he broke the bread and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let us take the bread and eat it, giving thanks for the broken body of Jesus. Later in their meal, he took the cup and he gave thanks and blessed it, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for many for the forgiving of sins. Drink from it, all of you. So let us drink the cup together, remembering that Jesus bled and died for each one of us. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, come to rule and to reign, come as Lord of glory, come to bring God's kingdom in all its fullness, come to heal our broken world, come to our lives with hope and joy and renewal. Blessed be the name of the Lord our Saviour, crucified, risen, ascended and glorified. Blessed be your name for ever and ever and ever. And now we bring to God our prayers of intercession. And I invite you to use the following response. When I say, faithful God, will you please respond with the words, hear our prayer. Faithful God, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for all who have suffered so much during this pandemic, for the bereaved, for the seriously ill, for those with long-term conditions, for those who are anxious about their families, or their jobs, or their education, or their future. We pray for strength, courage and new hope, that better days may lie ahead and that we may soon be able to build a new and better world. Faithful God, hear our prayer. We pray for our church fellowship, for those who have not been able to join these online services and who may be feeling isolated and alone. 
for those who are unwell or caring for loved ones, for those who have anxieties that perhaps others do not know about, for those who have been working throughout the crisis, especially those in the NHS or in frontline work. Faithful God, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation and its leaders. Give them wisdom in deciding how best to bring us through these days to better times, and how best to care for the vulnerable and the needy. And we pray for all nations, that the vaccines may soon be reaching all parts of the world for the good of all humanity. Faithful God, hear our prayer. We pray for our families and friends, asking you to keep them safe and to protect them from all harm. May we soon be reunited in freedom and able to enjoy being together once again. Faithful God, hear our prayer. And as we begin the season of Lent, we pray that we may make the time and the space to reflect on our own spiritual lives, drawing closer to God in prayer and learning from his faithfulness and love. Lord, in these troubling and unforeseen times, strengthen us in our faith, renew us in hope, encourage us in Christian service and equip us for the days ahead when there will be so much to be done. Be glorified in us, we pray. Faithful God, hear our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be upon us and remain with us, now and for evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining with us this morning. Do bring a coffee if you can and share with us for our regular Zoom chat at about 11 o'clock this morning. It will be lovely to see you if you can. And then we hope to see you again next Sunday morning at 10.30 for Sunday worship on Facebook or on YouTube. And I hope that you can be with us then. In the meantime, have a great week and may God bless you. Bye for now.